Hello everyone, happy Friday. Today is April 10th um, and the highly anticipated Friday update. Um, again, from my, from my home, so I apologize if I've got dogs running around or kids coming in and going and, and being loud, so I apologize ahead of time. Maybe none of that will happen. Uh, thank you to families that reached out with some questions for me uh, for today. Um, I relate this back to maybe a classroom and there are times when um, some kid will ask a question that a lot of other people had, a lot of other students had questions for, but just didn't know how to ask. Um, so it's good that we have some questions because I think I'm going to answer a lot of different concerns and so forth, just simply from an email or two from, from you guys. So, so thanks again for, uh, for doing that. And we'll continue this route too as we progress through these next few weeks. If you've got questions, email me and we'll see if we can't re respond to you right away. Um, or put it on this uh, video so that more people can get to that information as well. So I'm gonna jump right in. If I don't get to your question and, and answer it, um, please feel free to let's continue to have that conversation. But I, but I think I've got everything laid out here pretty well. Uh, I wanna talk to you about the, the three options that the state gave all school districts. Um, first option was ultimately no instruction. Uh, the second is voluntary instruction and the third was required. Uh, the, the no instruction was not an option for, for uh, Lindmar School District at all. Um, then we get into the tricky part about the voluntary and required, uh, which goes to some of the emails to me about the, the one hour um, time frame that we're allowing per subject um, uh, for the week. Um, we are doing the um, optional, um, excuse me, the voluntary um, uh, instruction here at Oak Ridge. And let me talk about the one hour a little bit. I've got, I had a few parents that were a little frustrated that it's only an hour. Um, I actually had some parents that were excited that it was only an hour. Um, so ultimately right now, and I hate to play the middle and kind of see both sides, but I agree. There are some families that certainly could use and want more than one hour of instruction per week. And there's some families that can't even do that. Um, so right now, not that we're playing to the middle or anything like that. This is our first attempt at it, and that's where we're at right now. I'm not saying it's going to change and it's going to increase, uh, but right now with uh, with our voluntary option, we are at one hour. Uh, we don't have we have some students that don't have um, devices um, and so forth at home. Um, our teachers have have worked really hard at being able to provide new content um, for students as we progress um, through the next few weeks. So there's a, another um, question that came up: was is it going to be new or review? And it will be new content but it's gonna be a bit, a bit of a slower pace. We can't expect students um, to do one full weeks of normal school when we're there five days a week um, to an online situation. Um, but we will be uh, attacking new concepts and new standards uh, for students um, to work on. Uh, feedback was a question that we have. We will not be grading anything um, because in this voluntary, it is considered optional. Um, so we won't be grading anything and put in power school we will be giving feedback though. And when students are turning things in through Google Classroom, through emails, teachers will be responding with feedback. That's kind of a difference from where we were maybe in the, in the previous weeks. And I think that's a good step in the direction of where we wanna go is new content and giving some feedback from, uh, from teachers for what the students are doing. Um, I know there's been some concerns uh, with the, the gap of learning, if, especially if we go beyond these five and six weeks we've been out of school, uh, what happens when they start school the next time there's that gap? I'll be honest with you, everybody's going to be in that gap, parents, teachers, and students. We will have to adjust when we get back to school. If it's May 1st or if it's August 23rd or 24th, we'll have to make that adjustment and it will look a little different at the beginning but it's gonna look different because we need to catch everybody up. So we are very aware and, and concerned about that as well, uh, but we will adjust to make sure that all kids get caught up at the same time before we move on to new things. Uh, handouts has been another thing that's been, and I kind of touched on that earlier, uh, we will be providing handouts. Now, unfortunately, handouts are not gonna be available until uh, April 22nd, um, but we will be posting um, uh, documents on our website that uh, you guys can look at. And then we'll have handouts to give to, um, to families at our drop, uh, our lunch grab and go uh, times um, at Oak Ridge. So if you're looking for a sixth grade packet or a seventh grade packet or an eighth grade packet, that will be there starting on Wednesday the 22nd. 
um, for that week. And in, in that time, it'll be actually two weeks um, because that'll um, encompass two different weeks. So we will be doing some printed copies. Um, it's just gonna take us a bit to organize all that from teachers, organize all that with the print center and get that uh, back to Oak Ridge. So we will be doing um, that. Some things that uh, will probably look, the, or will most likely will look the same is the weekly parent emails. Got a lot of feedback that parents do like that. One email from a teacher about everything. That's gonna continue. There'll be one addition to that email, maybe two additions. Uh, one, uh, teachers will all have an office hour and you'll be able to see that when they're going to be available. Um, and uh, in, available for email and uh, video conferencing. Um, and then the other part will be a Google slide that our teachers with Excelsior and Oak Ridge have worked together to create a slide that's gonna have everything for the week. That email will come to you on Sunday night. All grade level will come Sunday night. You'll know what the whole week will look like. There is a slide for each content from foreign language to music to our content classes to quarter classes to PE and health. It's all gonna be on there and you'll be able to access all of that uh, for the week. Um, we certainly hope that in this time we are going to increase our interactions. I've had a lot of people reach out about the kids really enjoy interacting with teachers and other classmates, um, either through Zoom or Microsoft Teams. That is going to going increase as we progress through. So those are good things. I let teachers know this morning that um, that was a, a, something that uh, parents were uh, curious about. So we will increase those things. And we'll do our best to separate those so they're not always landing at the same time for certain grade levels um, and teachers are gonna work together to make sure um, that happens. Uh, a couple last things that there were specific questions on for you eighth grade parents that have fourth quarter high school prep. Ms. Haynes is taking care of that. She's working with your kids already. She's very aware. We're hoping May 1st we're back so we can talk about high school classes. If not, we're gonna be able to talk about what that will look like down the road. And then I know there's some tag um, uh, questions too, and we're, we're getting to the tag thing. Um, for sure that we're not gonna have any standardized tests this spring, but we have other test results that we'll be able to use and teacher feedback uh, for that. So whew, that was a lot, a lot of information. I apologize for the lengthy email. I hope I answered your questions. If not, feel free to email me back. Call my office number, which will then go to an email to me. There's the dog. Um, we'll go to an email to me, so I'll be able to uh, reach back to you um, via phone if that works better. Have a great weekend. Take care.